What is up, Sales Dev Squad? Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Sales Dev Squad podcast here. We have a super special guest here, Mr. Evan Carlton, who is currently the Sales Enablement Manager over at Matillion, based out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, Evan is currently an associate for the Revenue Collective. He started off his career in sales in multiple different industries. He was also an SDR himself and has had a successful career in SaaS sales and have a few exciting topics that we wanted to cover in today's uh, episode. Um, first off, wanted to share with you more about how to make more than six figures, $100,000 a year in your first year as an SDR and some tips and tricks that Evan wanted to share with the SDR community as far as you know, post-coronavirus world strategies, how to adapt, how to stay positive. So Evan, thanks so much for joining on the podcast today. Would love to hear from you. How are you? Yeah. Hey, hey, Mateo. Thanks for having me. Uh, great to be on. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Um, uh, as you as you mentioned, uh, leading sales enablement here at Matillion now. Previously, was brought on to stand up and then scale the company's first ever global SDR program. Um, uh, did that, and I'm now in a position supporting inside sellers, uh, sales development, and also some portions of our account executive organization. Uh, we joke and say I'm one third ops, one third uh, learning and development, one third management. So wear a lot of hats. Um, and as you mentioned previously, I was an SDR at NetApp where um, had a, had a lot of success there and, and would be more than happy to share uh, some of the things that I did that, that I feel led to that success. But by, by the way, I, before we start, man, I just wanted to say that you've got a really impressive background. Um, I think you're doing great for, for how fast you're progressing in your career. And I love the fact that, you know, working as an SDR yourself, hosting this podcast to help other SDRs, and then also doing recruitment for SDR roles. I mean, that's, that's awesome, man. Really impressive uh, entrepreneurial spirit that you have. I appreciate it, Evan. Thank you so much, man. It means a lot. Yeah, of course. I, I just wanted to mention that uh, before you and I had connected, I was, I was impressed by your LinkedIn profile. So really appreciate it, man. Well, let's hear from you, man. Like you're, you're an SDR king over there. Like what are the tips and trades for making six figures as an SDR? Let's hear it. Sure thing, man. So, um, yeah. So when I was, when I was an SDR at NetApp, um, NetApp is a very well established multi-billion dollar international storage hardware player based out of Sunnyvale, California. So they do, um, storage hardware for data centers. Um, so, uh, just for context, um, I joined, uh, NetApp as an SDR, previously had been a, a, a full sales cycle inside sales rep at CenturyLink, which I think was very helpful in my time as an SDR. Um, I had a, a deeper understanding of like the full sales cycle and not just setting meetings or, you know, SAL, SQO, right? I was thinking about actual pipeline, actual closed one. So that was really helpful uh, to go from a full sales cycle role to top of funnel as an SDR. But the biggest thing um, that I think contributed to the success I had there was organization and process. And, um, for some, some additional context, I, um, I was, oh, I'm trying to remember the exact numbers now. <sighs> I think I was, I have to pull it up to be sure. Yeah, two, 200% of my, my plan in Q1, 206% in Q2. So of course you could do that math. That would say that I was 100% by halfway through the year. Um, I had an annual plan. And so you, got, you can imagine that the multipliers for the whole back half of that year were um, very generous, <laughs> very generous. That's awesome. So, um, <laughs> So yeah, I, I hit my number for the year in that first week of Q3 and um, it was just gravy from there. And uh, my boss used to regularly give me, give me crap saying that he thought I've made more than him. And uh, uh, in all likelihood, I, I may, may very well have uh, given how well I did in the role there. Um, but yeah, so the, the biggest thing that I did from day one was just like get organized. As soon as, as, soon as I came into the role, I wanted to know, hey, I feel like I'm a, a good sales professional, but I don't know this company's product and portfolio and, and process as well as some others might. So I quickly got stuck in with people who were successful. I was fortunate to have some friends on my team that were very generous with their time. Uh, shout out to my buddy, Niall James, who's now an account executive at Box. Um, Niall was, was really helpful in my early days, as well as Alexis Armijo, who is now uh, a channel manager at NetApp out in Seattle. Nice. So um, both have done well and progressed since then. But yeah, I mean, from day one, I just, I just kind of attached myself to, to Niall and Alexis and, and a couple other team members and shadowed them very closely to understand what they were doing that worked. Also try to identify things that I felt we could change or improve. From there, once I figured out a process, uh, organization is like key to be a highly effective salesperson. You can't just be a natural. 
you need to be very well organized and effective with time management. So I owned my schedule. I blocked uh, dedicated calling hours, one-on-ones with AEs and my manager, uh, dedicated admin time for uh, uh, lead routing and scrubbing, um, dedicated account building and outbound prospecting time. I even had monthly one-on-ones with my regional field marketing manager to understand what regional events were going on in the area that I could support and use to drive interest in in, uh, the prospects. Um, And that time is sacred. Like if if my manager asked me, hey, do you have a minute? And it was the middle of my calling hours, I would say, no, I don't. I'm calling right now. Um, I'm I'm available at 4.30. You know, my calendar's up to date. Um, I did the same thing to AEs. If an AE tried to hit me with a task, I'd say, hey, um, my calendar's up to date feel free to book a time that when I'm available. Um, And then the other thing is just following process too. Like activity begets results. And when you're starting, it can be like kind of a grind and and feel a bit um, like a not good return on your investment, but follow the process. The activity will come, the the results will come uh, as the activity will beget that. But the thing that I think was the most important in in my success there is that um, I've never really been one to accept uh, like the minimum. I, I, I try to, push myself a lot and um, do more than, than what is the minimum expectation. So the biggest thing I'd recommend to people, if you want to make six figures in your first year as an SDR, set your own KPIs. Don't follow the KPIs that are set by management because those are minimums usually, or they're, it's, a, it's a goal that um, is still often viewed like kind of a minimum daily KPI, weekly KPI. So if your boss says, hey, you got to make $50 a day, that's minimum. You should be shooting for 100 easily do, do more than that. And so what I did is that over time, I got some good sample size for data. I was placing, you know, hundreds, thousands of calls, emails. I started to figure out what worked, what didn't, and get a good idea of what my conversion metrics were like between stages. So, you know, how many, how many dials on average does it take me to set a meeting? How many meetings that I set will actually uh, hold or show up? How many that hold will result in an opportunity identified? How many OIs will result in an opportunity actually being created in Salesforce, um, pipeline attribution, how much of that's gonna go to closed one. And so I, I broke out the sales process like that into little bite-sized pieces. And then with that data that I gathered in the first few months, I could understand um, what my own conversion metrics were. And then I took my goal for the year and I did 300% of that. I said, whatever my goal is for the year, for my, uh, my OTE, right? I'm gonna 3X my annual goal and then using those conversion metrics, I figured out I can reverse engineer my activity on a monthly, weekly, daily basis to know how many dials I have to make a day to hit 300%. And I always tell our team, our SDRs at Matillion, if, um, if you're shooting to hit your quota, that's a great way to miss quota. Because <laughs> when something inevitably slips, now you're at 90. If you're shooting for two, 300% and something slips, well, big whoop, you landed at 150, right? So that's like my biggest advice for, for um, SDRs, if you want to make six figures your first year, um, I cleaned up very well in my time as an SDR. And that's, that's the process that I used. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Do you have like an idea of like what, what sort of activities, activity levels you were keeping yourself accountable to on a daily basis? Like how many dials and emails and just stuff were you trying to keep yourself accountable to on a daily basis? Man, uh, good question. It's been a few years now, so I'm trying to remember. I, I want to say I was I was shooting for 75 to 100 dials a day as my own goal. But at the end of the day, again, this is why I think being a closer before I was an SDR was really helpful. Any, any manager worth your salt and really any sales professional worth their salt will tell you all that matters is bottom of funnel. All that matters is revenue and results. Top of funnel begets results, right? So what I always told myself is I don't give a crap if I have to make 200 dials today or 20. But what I, what I gold myself on, I always told myself, I'm not going to lunch until I set a meeting and I'm not going home until I set a meeting. And so with the reverse engineering, the conversion metrics I mentioned, I basically figured out with my show up rate, my hold to OI rate, that if I wanted to do 300% the goal, I need to set two meetings a day and hold two meetings a day, right? Um, end, up, end up setting 10 a week, uh, holding 10 a week. Um, and that's what I, that's what I set myself for. So if my, if Niall and Alexis wanted to go out to lunch and I hadn't set a meeting, sometimes we, they might wait 20, 30, 40 minutes while I kept banging the phones to try to get that one. And there were also nights where I stayed in the office until the sun had been down for a while, still hammering the phones. So 
that's that's at least how I gold myself because I, I told mm -hmm. myself the activity is great, the KPI is great, but the results are what matter. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I really love how you 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 aim for results and you reverse engineer the results to what you need to do on a daily basis. That's freaking awesome. Yep. Um, I guess like how, how did you kind of keep yourself motivated? Because like. I feel like it'd be really, really hard to hold yourself accountable to standards above what the company is expecting you more like what you're kind of setting for yourself, for yourself, yeah. I guess, so to speak. Like, how did you kind of like, I don't know, just, just stay so committed to your um, activity goals? Uh, of course, I think that it, it helps. Well, it doesn't help. It's, it's a huge difference to work for a great company with a good product. I've, I've been very fortunate to work for some great companies, Matillion being, being the best job I've ever had, best company I've ever worked for. Um, NetApp was a great employment opportunity. I learned a lot, great product and portfolio and, and culture. I've also, you know, worked in some environments that weren't as, as a uh, healthy of a culture or they didn't have as strong of a product market fit or a uh, reputation. And it was a lot harder. So um, I will I will first caveat that NetApp has a great product, a great market presence, and I was fortunate to represent them as, as a member of their sales organization. But um, I've always been the kind of person that if you want something, go get it. When my boss put my comp plan in front of me and I did the math in my head, I said, okay, so it's uncapped commission, right? Okay, and so you're saying I'm gonna make this much OTE. Well, I did the math in my head and I said, I bet you I can do a lot more than that if it's uncapped. And um, just my personality style, like I said, if, if you want something, go get it. Nobody's going to give it to you. So I, I saw the opportunity and I, and I um, took action on that. And so that was just my guiding light, to be honest. Um, I wanted to advance my career quickly. I wanted to move into leadership. I wanted to make a bunch of money. I wanted to uh, make a name for myself in the organization. Um, and I just, and I just wanted to crush it. I'm, I'm highly competitive too. Grew, grew up playing a lot of sports. And so I, I wanted to be at the top of the leaderboard and I wanted to be the first for that promotion to the next role. Right. Um, and all of that ended up culminating in me being kind of an unofficial team lead at, the, at NetApp where I interviewed uh, prospective candidates. I wrote call, call scripts and email templates. I trained and onboard mentored, uh, mentored new hires and eventually moved into a management role at Battalion. That's super impressive, man. Like I must say like that, that takes mad personal like devotion and commitment to, to really establish those goals and not only achieve them, but blow them out of the water, man. So really got to tip off my hat to you. Uh, I wanted to shift gears here. Like, obviously we, we were kind of talking about like, you know, how activity kind of sheds into results. Like if we kind of paint a picture where we're at right now, like this, uh, you know, during this coronavirus sort of like uh, time period and maybe like post coronavirus time period, like what, what do you think it, it really takes to be a successful SDR during times like right now? Like, is it more activity? Is there sort of tactics that you would defer during a time right now? I guess what, what do you kind of see as, um, I guess, mindset shift is it more tactical like any tips that you can provide for sdr selling in covid right now yeah great question i mean i i don't i'm yet to come in contact with any any one or any business that hasn't been affected by this in some way um i think the first thing to recognize is that we have to adapt right um fortunately i think that sdrs in general just by by nature are very adaptable and um are very persistent and uh, dedicated kinds of people typically. So um, I think we're well positioned in that respect. But the biggest thing that I could advise, I mean, we're, we're going through this right now. I've been doing a lot of review and an uh, optimization of our messaging and sequences to make sure that it's relevant uh, given current events. So the biggest thing I can, I can recommend is to, of course, update your messaging, right? Uh, for most companies, your typical value prop is just not going to resonate with prospects right now. Your typical email subject lines are not going to get the opens that you want right now because those projects, those initiatives, those um, pains, those goals that those, those individuals are looking to achieve or those, those pains are looking to solve for, um, they have bigger fish to fry right now, right? Some, some businesses are just trying to keep the lights on. Some businesses are trying to figure out, like, how are we going to lay off? you know, a third of our company next week, right? Or we're, we're it's, a, it's a whole new world right now. And so 
the biggest thing is you got to update your messaging. You got to adapt. And so if you don't have an enablement person like myself at, at your company, and not a lot of, not all companies do, I think a great thing an SDR can do, go to your boss and volunteer to chair a content committee. And that content committee can be comprised of account executives, inside sales reps, SDRs, members of management, um, who, whoever, right? Um, of course, people that, that um, ought to have a, a seat at that table, right? Primarily customer facing sellers. But um, we formed that, right? I'm, I'm chairing an, an outreach content committee. We've got account executives, inside sales reps, and SDRs that are part of that, that nice. have been selected by their managers. We meet once a week. I drive and lead those meetings and do a lot of the content creation and outreach. They provide their feedback based on their conversations in the front lines with prospects, knowing what is and is not working. And then we adapt that way. Um, the thing to bear in mind is, is um, you know, why, why your product and service now, right? Your, your, your previous value prop is, is not gonna resonate with, with prospects. So why take that value prop, figure out what new unique pains are your prospects, your ICP facing right now, and then find a way to adapt your value prop to how you solve that problem for them. The other thing um, that I'd recommend doing, uh, you gotta put yourself in your prospect's shoes. A good salesperson is empathetic and can is able to understand the world through their prospects view and lens and speak their language. Think to yourself, you know, what, what are my prospects thinking about right now? What sort of emotions are they going through? What, what sort of things are probably top of mind for them from a business perspective? Is, is the business even on their mind at all, right? Um, thinking about those things. And then I think if you wanted to really take that a step further, if you have a prospect, Mateo, like if you have a prospect that you've worked with before as an SDR, where maybe you have a good relationship, you set up a great meeting, and now they're a customer and they're loving your product or service, and, and you still have that, that rapport and relationship, reach out to that person, as long as this person matches your ICP, your ideal customer profile well. Reach out to that person and offer as an SDR to buy them a virtual coffee or a virtual lunch and just pick their brain. Say, hey, look, I, I just wanna understand what sort of things are going through your mind right now so that I can better understand the needs of our customers. Uh, I'd love to just buy you lunch, Mateo. I'll send you a, a $20 DoorDash gift card or, or whatever, right? And um, lunch is on me, and I just want to pick your brain to understand what's going through your mind these days, because that would be hugely powerful, right? If you have a prospect that fits that ICP well, and you can get insight into actually what's going on in their world, that could be hugely valuable. That's awesome, man. I love the last idea that you mentioned, just, just taking the time to just understand their point of view instead of just trying to make 20 more dials and, and test your luck there. So. That's a most great most SDRs are pretty early in their careers, right? I, yeah. I at least I can say I've never been a, a storage hardware admin in, in IT. <laughs> I've, I've never been an ETL developer. I'm I'm about yeah. 30 years old, and I'm I'm older than a lot of you know SDRs might be early in their career. But I certainly can't say that. So um, we could yeah. all we could all benefit from that exercise to better understand our prospects and customers. Mm -hmm. That's super tactical stuff there, man. I, I can't wait to put some of that in practice, especially that DoorDash idea. I'll definitely steal that. Yeah, you'll, you'll have to let me know. And that, that's a great way to get the meeting too. Say, hey man, let's, instead of asking <laughs> for a demo or a disco, say, hey, let me buy you lunch. Let's have virtual lunch together. And then that's the demo. But they only mm -hmm. get, they get, they get the lunch if they show mm -hmm. up the demo or something, right? I see. Being creative right now, right? Everyone's stuck in front of a computer. So you might as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Evan, um, last question here for you. Um, obviously a tough time here. Um, a lot of people scared, a lot of uncertainty. Um, what are some things SDRs could do out there to stay positive and keep themselves sane during this weird time? Yeah. Um, we're, we're all dealing with that, right? We're all on this together. Everyone's facing that, that challenge the same way. I think that the first thing it's, it's important to look in the mirror, right? Like the SDR role is on its own during normal conditions, a challenging job, a, ver a very difficult job. Mm -hmm. um, and with recent events, it just got twice as hard. Um, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing, this, and this is the message that I'm giving to our teams, like all is not lost. This too shall pass. Eventually this too shall pass. Um, don't go all doom and gloom. It's easy to get bogged down in negativity and, you know, no one's buying. Why even pick up the phone? And you, you know, you, you can't, you can't have that attitude. Um, Honestly, if, if people are going to take that attitude, I know it sounds callous, but I'd say you just, you might as well quit. 
seriously. If, if a salesperson is going to take that attitude, quit and go find another job in a different field because you're, you're not going to get yourself anywhere with that attitude. You got to dig in, get creative and adapt, but you got to dig in. Um, the other thing I do, um, and I've always done this in difficult times and something I continue to do today, start with gratitude. First thing in the morning, I, I out loud say three to five things that I'm grateful for. And starting my day in that positive mindset, especially when I'm going through a tough time, is a really helpful way to just stay positive and um, not let the negativity and the, the anxiety get to me. Um, in fact, we used to do that. We did that a few times on our teams at Matillion. We'd go around the table as a group in meetings or on a Zoom and, and each, each share one thing that we're grateful for. Um, and then the other thing that we've done, um, we've, we're fostering this culture of positivity at Matillion right now where we're making an effort to give more public shout outs to team members, to coworkers, to peers, to congratulate them on accomplishments they've made. Maybe they, close, they managed to close a deal or they set a meeting that was really hard to set or they wrote a really good sequence um, or they just went above and beyond, right? Shout that out, go in like a public forum and like your, your, your sales team Slack channel and tag them and say, hey, Mateo, I just wanna give Mateo a shout out. He just delivered a killer demo great big, you know, billion dollar plus logo, nice. kudos to Mateo, right? Just that little sort of thing, you'd be surprised how much that can boost morale company-wide because we could all use a little bit more positivity in our lives these days. Absolutely. Evan, these are great tips, man. I can't wait to put some of these into practice and to share this with other members of the SDS community. Um, for anyone out there that's listening that, you know, wants to reach you directly or, you know, just wants to pick your brain at all, like where's the best place to reach you? Yeah, uh, uh, LinkedIn for sure, man. Um, I'm on linkedin.com slash in slash the Evan Carlton. Um, should be able to find me pretty easily there. Uh, respond whenever I'm able to. Admittedly, I'm pretty, pretty swamped these days, but I'll do my <laughs> best to get back to people. All good, Evan. Thanks so much. Sales Tip Squad, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, special edition here of the Sales Tip Squad podcast. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Evan, thank you so much for being a great guest and um, thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Mateo.